Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm GB and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you all the puzzles that I completed for the month of August. Um, there's a mix, there's some from Instagram, some from videos here on YouTube, and also some that I just felt like doing. Uh, I'll be putting the details for those in the description box below, so check that out if there's any that you're curious about. And for each puzzle, I'm just sort of gonna give you my thoughts on it, um, like what I thought of the experience, and yeah, just a sort of quick review. And then at the end of the video, I'll let you know which puzzle I thought was my least favorite and which one was my favorite. So the puzzles aren't in any real particular order, it's just sort of however I grab them. Um, so before I get stuck into this pile, I'm gonna quickly talk about two puzzles that I don't have here anymore. So the first one is one that I ended up uh, passing on to a friend. Um, so that one is from the Australian brand of Little Things and it's called The Wild Garden and it's actually sort of like a collection or a set of four of them all by the same artist and it's sort of this really beautiful, pretty, kind of hand-drawn, whimsical, uh, like illustration style, I guess. And yeah, this one's got like lovely ferns and sort of flowers and like colorful insects and like a giant moth. And then there's a couple of birds on there and they're, I think at least one, I'm not sure about the other one, they're like, it's a type of bush turkey. So he, I don't know if you've got them where you are, but it's, I guess, kind of like a wild turkey, but um, here these ones sort of just forage in like undergrowth and amongst dead leaves and stuff, I guess, trying to find bugs or something. Um, yeah, so it's got a couple of those. And yeah, I really like the style. It's sort of quite lively, I guess, because of all the sort of very sketchy, wiggly kind of hand-drawn lines makes it almost feel like it's coming alive a bit. But yeah, really pretty image. And the quality is not bad either with this brand. Um, the pieces have like a sort of gray brown board backing, no, no paper or anything, so quite simple and nice. Um, they're kind of more on the thin to medium thickness, um, but they do like fit together really nicely. Um, yeah, they hold together well, you can pick up sections. I don't think there were really any false fits. Uh, there was like no dust at all. And they do have a smooth surface with like a little bit of sheen, but it didn't really have any problems with it when puzzling. But yeah, overall like, quite a reasonable, nice brand. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed the experience. And then the next one that I don't have here, uh, that's a traveling puzzle. So it's off to its next recipient. So, um, and that one was uh, Winter's Wonders by uh, New England Puzzle Works. I forgot to mention actually the previous puzzle was 1000 pieces and this one is two. Um, and yeah, this one uh, is the first time I'm trying that brand which is from New England in the US. So that was exciting. Um, and yeah, it was a really beautiful sort of pastel kind of snowscape winter scene, like lots of pinks and purples and whites. And yeah, just lots of beautiful like snow capped sort of pine trees or Christmas sort of style trees and um, mountains and sort of a sort of, I guess, gradient sky and cute little houses and stuff. And then yeah, uh, people having fun doing winter activities like ice hockey being played on like the frozen lake and someone skiing, people making a snowman. Yeah, lots of cute little details going on. But yeah, I quite liked it. It was quite fun, really beautiful image. Um, the quality, uh, the pieces sort of had like a white paper backing, which isn't my favorite, but actually it was seemed to be uh, made quite well in this case. I didn't see any peeling or anything and the pieces seemed very crisply cut. Um, the pieces are sort of medium thickness quite like sturdy and I guess hard and the top was quite smooth. It did have a bit of sheen. It wasn't too bad in puzzling. Actually posed more of a problem when trying to take pictures because it was like uh, my light kept sort of like shining on it a lot, but that's okay. At least uh, I guess the main thing is it was fine to puzzle with for me. Um, I think my biggest con though with that one was that the piece fit was quite loose so I couldn't really at all pick up sections. So I had to be a bit more strategic about where I was building things, not trying to like, you know, pick them up and move them because that wasn't gonna happen. Um, but yeah, overall I enjoyed the experience. It was pretty positive and glad I got to try the brand and I think they have some really nice images. So, you know, if I get the opportunity to try more from them, I probably would, I guess. So yeah. So let's now go through the pile here. So the first one is by Tanya Wicks and it's called Feathered Friends and it's 1000 pieces. And I've done a few of these now and I really enjoy them. Uh, it has definitely become one of my favorite brands. Um, and all the uh, photography is done by Tanya Wicks. So yeah, and it's gorgeous. Um, 
So this one, like the name suggests, has all these beautiful feathers, so much like texture and detail captured in it and like lots of interesting sort of little colors and patterns and things. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, this is just a section of the, the image. There is a poster inside with like the whole image. Um, but yeah, um, actually out of her puzzle so far, I think this has probably surprisingly been probably one of the easier ones. Like they've all been fairly challenging. Um, but I think this one was a little bit more straightforward than some of the others. I mean, some of the feathers are a bit tricky. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. Even though it's not like crazy bright colorful, I just thought it's really pretty and beautiful. And yeah, just love like, you know, the textures and everything. Um, and I really like the quality in these. Um, so they are a gray board, uh, like a piece with gray board backing. Um, I think the thick, yeah, the thickness is sort of like medium, maybe medium to thick. Um, the surface is like quite a matte, fairly smooth finish, but yeah, very matte. Um, so that's great. Um, not really any puzzle dust, comes in a resealable bag. What else? Oh, pieces fit together beautifully. I haven't experienced in any of these, any false fits. So that's very impressive. So yeah, really pleased with that. And you can um, pick up sections as well. Um, yeah, just, I don't think I've got really anything negative to say about the brand. I just, yeah, really enjoy pretty much everything about it. Love the images and yeah, the quality is really nice. So. Yeah, definitely uh, happy that I got to do this one this month. And then next up is, I forgot to mention that's an Australian brand and this one is too. And I think I mentioned it, the, the first puzzle I talked about, that's an Australian brand too. So there's a few Aussie brands here. Always nice to do some local brands. Um, so this next one is 1000 pieces and it's by the brand Rowan Co or Ruby Olive Online. And this one's called Wild Natives. Um, and this is just a section of the image here. They do have the sort of full one on the back and also I believe it's on the inside. Yeah, it's a whole image there as well. Um, yeah, so this one was actually like gifted to me for review. So I sort of did a whole like review of this on Instagram, which you can sort of go check out if you're interested in a reel and stuff. But yeah, I really um, love the artwork and colors in this one. It's like just so vivid and bright and actually the artwork's a little bit special. It's not just like an illustration. The artist created it using like cut out bits of like paper to sort of make a, you know, layered collage and all the papers like hand painted. So yeah, if you like look closely, you can see all the sort of paint on the paper and yeah, it's really cool. It's like quite different and just, yeah, it looks really pretty. It's really cute. So, and as I think there's a few from this brand, like there's a few in this series, but yeah, really glad to have tried this one out. I think it's really cute. I definitely would have got it myself anyway, I think. Um, but yeah, it basically features like all these cute, like, let me have a look. Um, yeah, there's like, you know, a cockatoo and like a uh, kangaroo, like basically Australian like flora and fauna. Um, yeah, really pretty, lots of like Australian plants and critters and animals and things. And yeah, it's just really cute and very colorful. Um, and then as for the brand, I actually have quite a few of these in my collection. Um, I don't mind them. They're probably not my most favorite quality, but it's still quite nice quality. So as you've seen, the box is like got this cool kind of magnetic like opening and um, the pieces come in this really nice like zipper bag. So yeah, it's quite, quite luxe. So yeah, very, you know, nice to have. Um, and then, yeah, so as for the pieces, ah, there we go. <laughs> That'll teach me for opening the box. Um, they do have like a white paper backing. They actually remind me a little bit of the New England Puzzle Works because they've sort of got that uh, white paper backing and then like that kind of medium thickness and like hard like kind of top and they're quite sturdy. Um, yeah, so similar in that respect. Um, and yeah, again, the top is like quite smooth and a little bit of sort of sheen. Yeah, so I guess it is a bit similar. Um, I don't think, yeah, no puzzle dust really with these. And however, the fit, I do like the fit a lot more with the Rowan Co puzzles than the um, New England one because like the pieces do tend to fit a bit more snugly so you can actually pick up sections kind of carefully. Like, you know, it's a little bit hit and miss, but if you're, if you're generally, if you're sort of gentle, you can manage to move sections. So yeah, um, but yeah, overall, I really liked it. And I definitely, there's a few others by the same artist, which I definitely want to get at some point because I just think that's just such a pretty whimsical image. And yeah, overall really positive and enjoyable experience. And then um, we've got here a 
a puzzle from Puzzle Club, which is a UK brand. And I think they've actually just recently changed their name to Happy Place. I will double check that. If it's wrong, I'll put what it is on the screen, but I'll also pop it down below in the description. Um, but this one's called Well Traveled. And yeah, it just features all these like uh, really fun, quite colorful and creative like vintage travel posters or advertisements. Um, but yeah, it's got all sorts of different countries here. There's like Australia and Singapore, Finland, you know, different cities as well, I guess, like Paris. Um, what else? London. Yeah, there's all sorts. and. I, I really like these sort of very graphic, colorful, interesting uh, kind of vintage posters, particularly travel, because they're always just so creative and really interesting and use a lot of like, uh, text, like text elements and shapes and things. So yeah, I really like it. It was very fun and quite quick and easy to put together. It's almost like lots of little mini puzzles. So yeah, very fun. Um, this is the first time trying this brand as well. And um, I actually think these pieces or the quality of the puzzle is like real. Well, mm. The pieces are very similar to Gibson's if you've ever done that. I think I would not be surprised if they're actually made by the same like company, like manufacturer, because uh, to me they seemed very, very similar. So they're uh, a gray board um, piece and they're quite like thick and chunky and kind of like smallish, like more square. Um, unlike Ravensburger, it's like more long um, and they fit pretty snugly together. You can pick up sections. There, there was a little bit of dust though and the surface on this was like kind of this sort of I guess smooth papery surface so there was a little bit of sheen sometimes. Um, I did have a bit of a con though with this one unfortunately like I noticed some of the paper on top was cracking a bit especially like near the tabs so it seemed like anytime I guess the paper was like under some sort of stress like where the pieces joined together it seemed to like have a bit of cracking. Um, and I actually spoke to the owner um, and they said that, yeah, it was like whatever these sort of paper stock type of paper they used on the surface of the puzzle um, kind of caused that. So, but apparently the next, I guess, release of puzzles from this brand is not gonna have that problem because they've changed the type of, I guess, paper or cardboard they use on top. So that is good to know. And hopefully, yeah, hopefully the next release will be, um, nicer quality on top. But apart from that, I did really enjoy it and had a lot of fun. And I'm definitely keen to try more from this brand because they have some really fun designs coming up. So yeah, definitely excited about those. And then this next one was another new brand. I feel like it's a fa fairly uh, large amount of new brands going on here. So this one is by Martin Schwartz and um, this one's Berlin and it's 1000 pieces. And Basically, I think pretty much all the puzzles from this brand are all like different cities. Um, but yeah, I picked Berlin because I've been there ages ago and I just also thought like this sort of image of the city is very colorful and has a lot of like interesting architecture and real mix of buildings and stuff. Um, but yeah, the way it's sort of done is really interesting. It's sort of like, I guess, clustered all these different types of buildings from around the city all together in this like one image that sort of all overlapped and like displayed in an interesting way. But yeah, it's so like, there's like a lot of hyper detail. Like, yeah, when you're getting close, there's so much going on and so many interesting buildings. So I really like the art style. It's quite um, like striking and different and very different to sort of any sort of city like type puzzles I've seen before. Yeah, so I really like it. I've even got another one uh, in my to-do pile of a different city. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, so I really love the image. Um, it does come with a big poster. Um, and then on the back, there's a key to tell you what all the buildings are, which was in German. Thankfully, I could sort of understand most of it, but I guess if you don't speak German, it might be, you might have to use a translator or something like translate app. But, uh, but apart from that, you know, it was nice having that big poster, especially cause like, this lid, I mean, this box is a little bit on the smaller side, so it is a bit tough to see some of the details, but yeah, the post is quite big, so you can see them easily. Um, but yeah, the pieces were, they are a gray board and it's sort of like, I guess a medium-ish thickness. And the surface is like, again, kind of a papery finish, but fairly smooth with a, they're kind of like semi-gloss a bit with a bit of a sheen. Um, and the pieces fit pretty well together, although I did have a couple false fits, surprisingly. 
um, or maybe not surprisingly, I don't know. I guess because like with some of the buildings there's like ones that have like lots of windows and stuff that look, look the same. So I think on some of those, there were like some false fits, not too many, maybe a couple. Um, but the piece, apart from that, the pieces do fit together pretty well. You can pick up sections. So yeah, um, yeah, I think overall, like I'm quite happy with this brand. Um, it is a bit of a luxe, like the price, at least here in Australia for these is a little bit high end. Um, so I sort of have slightly mixed feelings about, hmm, does the quality match the price? Like there's definitely other, I guess, brands that I probably prefer the quality of, but the quality is still quite nice in this. There's de definitely really nothing wrong with the quality at all. It's nice. It's just, I guess, you know, for similar price, at least here in Australia, you can get probably puzzles that have like more luxurious quality, like the Tanya Wicks and like Art and Fable and things like that. Um, but you know, I think uh, the images are just really interesting and unique. And um, I think at least for that alone, it's still worth it. So yeah, but really glad to try it. And I probably would get more of these, I think, cause I just really enjoy it. So yeah, so that was fun to do. And then what else? Okay, we've got one here, which is only a 500 piece one from Fred or Genuine Fred. And it's called Ice Pops. And I guess it's, yeah, it's a photo. Um, I don't know why I got it, <laughs> but um, because I like, when I look at those like, like sticks, ugh. It's like fingers on a, like a nails on a chalkboard for me. I'm like, Ugh. but um, it was very, you know, bright and colorful, very summery. Um, you know, it's not my most favorite image. Again, why did I get this one? I don't know. I think I thought it would look like, you know, would be really fun to do. But, you know, then when I got it, I was like, eh, eh, eh. so this one might end up getting, you know, uh, decluttered, I think. Um, but that's okay. Um, but, you know, I still enjoyed it for like what it is. But yeah, definitely a good one to do in summer, I reckon. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I guess fun, colorful image. And then um, the quality of like Fred puzzles, I, I quite like it. I've done a few of them. Um, they have like a gray backing, uh, like gray board. Uh, the pieces fit pretty snugly together. You can pick up sections, I guess, fairly well most of the time. Um, I don't remember. I think there was, I don't think there was too much dust in this one. Uh, it comes in a resealable like Ziploc bag. Um, what else? Oh, the pieces, they do have a pretty smooth top with a little bit of sheen. Um, I feel like that's been a bit of a running theme in a lot of these puzzles too. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah, overall, like the piece fit and quality is pretty nice. Um, yeah, so I definitely, yeah, I definitely enjoy the Fred puzzles. Um, like I said, it's not my most favorite design, but the quality is nice and yeah, and obviously I, I definitely have, will be doing more of their puzzles because I have a whole bunch in my collection that I need to do. But yeah, this one's probably one of my least favorites. Um, I don't know why past me bought this one, but I think it was on sale, but still I've got to stop doing that. But uh, for what it was worth, it was, it was fun. And then just have a like three more here of this stack. And then we do have another stack, but you know, I'll try and get through these. So we have a couple here from Ravensburger. So this one's a 500 piece one. They're actually by the same artist, um, Matt Sewell. I think that's how, Sewell, Sewell. I don't know how you say his name, um, but this one's called Our British Birds. And yeah, this one's just really cute. I really love his um, art style. It's just really whimsical, really cute and pretty and so much detail. And yeah, just love the way he captures his sort of birds and I guess critters. Um, I, th I don't know how it's done. I think maybe watercolor, it kind of looks like watercolor. But yeah, just really pretty. Um, you just love all the little details and patterns and yeah, everything's just really cute. Um, and yeah, just classic Ravensburger quality. So blue board backing, pieces fit pretty nicely together. Sometimes they hold together. I feel like with Ravensburger, some puzzles seem to be a little looser or tighter than others. So it's a little bit hit and miss as to whether you can pick up sections or not. Um, I think from memory I could pick up, I could like put a bird together and then sort of gently move it and it would sort of stay together. Um, and what else? I feel like Ravensburger has quite an interesting surface. I always feel like a lot of their puzzles almost have like a little bit of a puffy surface. Like it's not completely like flat. It's like a little bit um, raised or puffy, but I don't mind it. It kind of feels quite nice. Um, and yeah, it wasn't too like glossy or anything on the surface. Pretty kind of like in between, like you know, mostly matte, but a little bit of sheen, but not too bad. 
and oh and then my pet peeve <laughs> like the tons of puzzle, puzzle dust even with like this little one there was still quite a substantial amount of dust um, but you know a lot of people say you can just use like a sieve or something and like I guess get rid of the dust that way I always keep forgetting to do it by the time I've opened it up and I've started I'm like oh didn't like shake out the puzzle dust but so yeah um, but overall I really enjoyed this one it's super cute really like it and I yeah definitely a fan of this artist so yeah really glad to have done that one and then yeah the next one's by the same artist and I think uh, this one's quite a new design this whereas the our British birds one was has been out uh, maybe a couple years or a year or something so this one's called garden visitors also 500 pieces and yeah it's really cute um, I really enjoyed this one as well same sort of style with this sort of watercolor and just really cute whimsical um, adorable little critters so this one's got like a mix of birds and then I guess guess like kind of well this artist is from the UK so I think these are all like I guess European or British like creatures so there's like squirrels and foxes uh, hedgehog I guess um, it was like bats and other little sort of critters and I don't know what all the birds are or a pigeon but but I'm assuming they're like kind of more European style birds um, yeah, and there's little plants and leaves and things and flowers on like a rabbit or a hare. Yeah, it's really cute, very pretty. Really enjoyed this one. Um, and yeah, the quality is the same as the other one. Blue board backing and yeah, usual kind of um, Ravensburger quality. And then the last one from this pile um, is one I borrowed from a friend and it's from Art and Fable and it's a little 500 piece one and it's called East of the Sun and West of the Moon. Um, and it's just this, like, how would I describe it? It looks like it's taken from like a fairy tale book. It's sort of like, you know, a open spread from like, you know, part of a book because it's sort of got the title up here and then it's got a little bit of text and with like, you know, the sort of fancy first letter of the, you know, text or paragraph and it's got these beautiful ornate borders. Um, yeah, and the image is just this really sort of, um, Kind of, I think the artist is from like this sort of arts and crafts, Art Nouveau sort of period of time because that's definitely the style I'm getting here. It looks very sort of sketched and etched and very like fine and detailed and really beautiful. Um, yeah, so this was like quite a nice one to put together. Yeah, it's, re it's really quite very detailed and really beautiful. Um, so yeah, definitely enjoyed that one. Um, and yeah, I'm just trying to see the artist. Yeah, it says, says the artist K. Nielsen uh, from 1886 to 1957 um, during, contributed during the golden age of illustration. So yeah, that definitely makes sense that that's what this is. This like very ornate illustration, but yeah, beautiful. So I really enjoyed that. And um, I really love Art and Fable, um, even the box. So the box and the pieces have like what they call velvet touch finish. It's like almost like a sort of soft, buttery soft silicon kind of feel so yeah it's really luxe and like the box feels like that and all the pieces are like that um, and the pieces are like grey board and fit together very nicely occasionally I get false fits not too often but yeah they fit together well you can pick up sections um, they're kind of like medium thickness um, not you don't usually get much puzzle dust with these either I mean obviously someone's done this before me because I borrowed it from a friend but even still whenever I've done new ones there wasn't really any puzzle dust um, and yeah, it's always very artist focused as well. Like, so this one has a whole, like, a lot of info about the artist and, you know, like, uh, all about the artwork and stuff like that. Oh, and they always, like, donate to different causes. Um, yeah, so it's quite a cool brand. But yeah, really liked it. Love the sort of luxury feel of it. And yeah, the image is just really beautiful as well. So uh, that's that pile done. And we have one more pile to get through. And then I'll talk about my favorite and least favorite. Okay, so let's go through this last pile here. So I did this 1000 piece uh, Happy Cats puzzle from Treffle. And yeah, it's just a very fun and kind of silly, cute cat puzzle, very bright and colorful. Um, yeah, love cats. It's a pretty sort of simple, cute image and yeah, had fun doing it. Um, the Treffle quality, it's not my favorite. I mean, for a start, the boxes for some reason are like kind of just really oversized and massive. It really could be like half this size. I think they're even bigger than Ravensburger. Don't know why, it just seems to be how they all are, but eh. 
And then um, the pieces are grey board. They're kind of like thin to medium thickness, but they are pretty sturdy. Um, I can't remember if there was dust. I think there was a little bit. Uh, I can't remember. I did this one a while ago. Um, the pieces, I think as well from memory, they fit together okay, although I did have some false fits, especially like in this patterned area here. You wouldn't think so because it's a pattern, but surprisingly I did. Um, and I, from memory, the pieces are a bit more on the looser side when it comes to how they fit together. Um, what else? Uh, they actually, oddly, the pieces sort of have like a linen finish, but it's not really matte. It's sort of like similar to this box. There's like a bit of, this has almost got a similar finish. I think it, maybe it's more textured on the pieces, but they have this sort of sheen to them and like, or like a very slight semi-gloss. So not a matte linen finish, a slight sheen linen finish. Um, yeah, overall, like the pieces, they feel nice to handle and stuff. But um, yeah, there's a few things about them that I'm not a huge fan of. Yeah, just like the fit and like false fits and kind of the looseness and stuff. Um, but you know, I think they're quite a, an affordable like uh, price, at least here in Australia. So I think for that, like they're fine. But yeah, overall, it's still kind of a fun, pretty like easygoing, chill image to do. So yeah, still enjoyed it. And then next we have one that I quite enjoyed. This is from Hay and it's 1000 pieces and it's by like, I guess the artist group called eBoy and this is the London one. Um, and they call it Pixarama Seek and Find Stars and Sights. It's one of these puzzles where you can like, if you want to, you can try and find as many like famous people and icons and pop culture references and stuff. I found a few, but there was definitely heaps where I'm like, I have no idea what that is. Um, but yeah, I really love this image. I've actually done the, uh, New York one from them and they have like a Berlin one as well and I think a Tokyo one's coming out which I'm excited about but yeah it's all this sort of pixel kind of like I guess 8-bit kind of art and yeah it's really fun um very colorful there's a lot of yeah pop culture references like famous things going on but there's also weird wacky silly things like there's like these people well robots I guess or people with robot heads and um, what else is like strange little devil creatures and like some apes bathing in like the river and like a kraken uh, so people uh, skinny dipping with the kraken go figure yeah all sorts of weird things um, but yeah really fun to put together definitely lots of like detail and weird and quirky and wonderful things going on so yeah really had a lot of fun with this one um, yeah, just really enjoyable. Um, and the quality of hay is pretty nice. Like it's gray board. The pieces are sort of like medium to thick. Um, uh, not, I think it's a little bit of dust or not too much. It's not, I mean, not Ravensburger level of dust. If there were, uh, yeah, again, I did this one a little while, like earlier in the month of August. So I'm having trouble remembering. Um, but from memory, the dust wasn't too bad. Um, what else? Um, the pieces fit reasonably well together. Um, and I was able to pick up sections uh, if I was sort of careful, I guess. So yeah, you can, yeah, you can definitely pick up bits if you're gentle. Um, and the surface is smooth, but uh, I guess like a little bit of sheen, but not too bad, especially when puzzling. Uh, yeah, overall, ni pretty nice quality. Um, love the artwork. Yeah, really enjoyed this one. And then next was another very fun one. So definitely some quite fun ones this month. And, cute things on them. So this is uh, by Gibson's. It's 1000 pieces and it's called Pigeons of Britain. And it's just a really silly, whimsical image. It's got the whole image on the back. Um, yeah, basically it's just pigeons that are sort of, I guess, dressed up as different like famous celebrities and icons. So you've got like Elton John, the Queen with one of her corgis. So you've got Freddie Mercury, the Beatles, um, David Bowie. Uh, yeah, it's like uh, Shakespeare. So all sorts of famous uh icons and yeah and i it's just really fun and it's just such a silly like wacky image but it's just so beautifully illustrated um, and there's also all these other cute little details so like i said there's the corgi but there's like you know uh, bangers and mash and little instruments and cakes and like cups of tea and lots of british i guess things or other little uh like accessories and things that sort of go with the celebrities but yeah really fun really cute um, really really enjoy this image definitely love it um, and the quality of gibson's is it's pretty nice like the pieces are like gray board they're quite like thick and chunky and they're kind of smaller 
So yeah, this is very similar to the uh, the one I did from the Puzzle Club before. So I suspect they might be from the same manufacturer. Um, yeah, and then this one, um, I think the top was just like a smooth paper top with a, like a bit of sheen. Um, I think there was a bit of dust as well. Pieces fit pretty snugly together. Uh, you could pick up sections from memory. What else? Um, yeah, I think overall I'm... I quite like Gibsons. I yeah, I think they're pretty nice. I, however, there was a little bit of damage to a couple of the pieces. Like I think a couple of the pieces weren't cut through completely, and one, the tab had sort of like ripped off on one. But like it was still in there, so I could like pop it in. But yeah, yeah so I sort of need to glue it together. I think. Um, so you know, I guess that happens sometimes. Um, thankfully, some of the other Gibsons ones in my collection didn't really have that problem, but. Yeah, still a little bit disappointing when you get damage in your puzzles, but it, at least it sort of didn't seem to affect the overall look. Although I just did remember something that did kind of bother me. Um, so after the puzzle was done, um, some of the pieces just wouldn't quite lie flat. They were sort of kept popping up a little bit. So you would pop one down and another one sort of come up. But yeah, I don't know why that is. Um, I feel like I haven't seen that on some of the other ones I have. So maybe it just depends maybe there were some issues with manufacturing on this one or something but overall I still enjoyed the puzzle I still in general like the Gibson's quality and yeah I really love this image and then um, one that I did really recently which is super cute is one of the very new PMP puzzles so pick and pre-order puzzles from Soonus um, so this is like one you sort of had to pre-order from the pick and pre-order event back in June I think um, where they sort of like, they're very limited and um, basically you vote or pre-order for your favorite. They have a range of uh, designs by various artists and you like uh, pre-order the ones that you really like and then if they get enough, I guess, votes, they get turned into actual puzzles. Um, so this one is called Good Vibes Only. It's 1000 pieces and it's by the artist uh, Humberto Cruz. And uh, this is just a segment of the image, but the whole image is on the back. And yeah, really love this one. Um, it's beautiful quality um, and just a gorgeous image. Like every one of these has like such interesting artwork and yeah, this one's no exception. I really love the artwork. It's so cute and adorable. It has all these like really fun little colorful, super happy, cheerful critters like bees and a, you know, like a cute cat and happy love hearts and suns and rainbows and mermaids and things. Yeah, it's just really, it's really adorable and um, yeah, really enjoyed putting this image together. It's just so much fun and just so colorful, very, very me, matches my background. Um, yeah, so I really enjoyed the artwork. And yeah, the quality of these is really nice. Like the box is, you know, very aesthetically pleasing, has like kind of a bit of texture, ASMR texture to it, like a little bit, kind of like a linen finish-ish. Um, and the pieces are very similar. Um, so like the pieces have a uh, nice gray board back and they fit really nicely together like everything sort of fits that like exactly where it's supposed to go and um, there's just like no false fits at all so really impressed with that um, yeah everything fits nicely you can pick up sections um, there's not really much dust at all um, and the um, the pieces like I said they have a little bit of texture very subtle but they're quite matte um, and even though they, they do even though they have texture they still feel very smooth and yeah, and they, they have quite a matte finish, uh, not much sheen at all. Um, what else? And yeah, it comes with like a nice big poster and a little postcard and um, it's all like plastic free. So you get like, it all comes in a paper bag and you get like a replacement paper bag. So yeah, very cool. But yeah, really enjoyed the whole experience. Love the quality, love the image, love all the sort of thoughtful details that went into it. So yeah, definitely really, really enjoyed this one. And then I also did another one uh, from Soonus, which was a PMP puzzle, like from the same um, like event. And this I did a video on, so I will link that up the top. Um, and the same for any others that I did videos on. I'm not sure I did, maybe, I can't remember. But yeah, I'll link any videos up the top. Um, and this one is a very cool image. So this one is called Gone Coastal by the artist Kathy Ager and it's 1000 pieces. And this is just part of the image and the whole image is on the back, but basically features this very sort of hyper-realistic, I believe it's an oil painting of like these Nike 
sneakers hanging up in this like sort of stone arch window I guess because you've got this gorgeous like blue and cloud sky in the background and, and it's a little bit surreal too because it's got like a butterfly sitting on the shoe and then at the bottom there's like these shells so it's like a bit odd and like even just the sky background is sort of a bit weird but yeah it's just such a really interesting unique cool image of like never really seen anything quite like it so yeah it was a really like uh, interesting and very tricky puzzle to put together because it took me quite a long time like a lot longer than the previous one um, I mean you can probably guess why there's like just lots of it's it's quite a restricted color palette so you've got lots of like blues and whites and creams and then all these like grays and blacks so yeah the arch especially took me a really long time um, but uh, you know the thing that really made it go smoothly was just the really good quality so just like the other one yeah beautiful fit and it really actually surprised me there wasn't a single false fit in this one so I was really really impressed like I really was expecting you know there to be at least one or two false fits especially in the gray but yeah there just wasn't so I don't know how they will do this magic but I'm very impressed um, yeah so even though it was a challenging puzzle I really enjoyed it and I just thought the end result was just awesome just looked really cool and definitely one that you could frame I think so yeah really, yeah, really liked it and then we just got a couple more and then we'll be done um, so another one I did is this one from masterpieces and I guess it's it's called contours so I guess that's part of their sort of shaped puzzle series and this one's called tropical menagerie and it's 1000 pieces and um, I'm questioning why I got this one <laughs> I don't know what past me was thinking it's very like kitsch and really kind of daggy feels like a daggy 80s kind of image or something um, but I think I was drawn to the sort of fish shape I just thought that was like a really interesting and a bit different yeah so it's like a shaped puzzle in the shape of fish and it even has some I guess little whimsy pieces only like three is like what a dolphin a turtle and a fish just to make it a bit more interesting I reckon it should have had more that would have been cool but anyway um, I actually yeah I don't know why I got this one the image is like really kitsch and very 80s and a bit tacky um, it is really colorful and bright so there's some parts of it that are quite pretty and it and I guess overall it was sort of fun and just yeah colorful and cheerful but I'm like why, why did I get this with like killer whales and dolphins leaping into the sunset <laughs> I don't know I don't know what I was thinking um, but anyway uh, it was interesting to do the fish shape I hadn't really done anything quite like that um, and I never I have done a couple of masterpieces like normal 1000 piece puzzles before which were okay but I hadn't tried this but I didn't really like the quality actually it was like um, they were yeah they were I think a gray brown board backing but the pieces are very like quite thin and very like soft and bendy like it felt felt kind of cheap a bit like Seiko or um, I don't know what's another brand or oh, like Remarks Remarks whatever it's called like those two a bit sort of that kind of cheaper flimsier feel with that very glossy smooth top finish um, very cardboardy um, and there was a lot quite a lot of dust with this one as well and uh, the pieces sort of fit okay sometimes I from memory I can't remember if I could pick up sections not really I don't think yeah so I'm not yeah wasn't really a huge fan I thought the shapes are cute and the shape of the fish was kind of interesting but I really don't think I would um, get one of these again and even the box it's like very soft and bendy feels very a bit cheap and eh. I mean I'm glad I tried it at least now I know what it's like probably won't get any more from this range I definitely still get the normal masterpieces one I think those are fine but yeah this one I'm like eh. it's probably you know like I'm I think the way they do these ones it's like probably a different machine or manufacturer definitely from memory it seems quite different quality to the other masterpieces ones but eh, interesting experience not my favorite <laughs> and then the very last teeny weedy puzzle is this little hundred piece one from typo I don't know if you have typo where you are but here it's sort of like a stationery slash gift store kind of very young and funky and has some like pop culture stuff and some cute stuff but yeah I guess this is from there and someone gave it to me and it's just does it have a name it just says hundred piece shape puzzle 
Various designs available, complete them all, okay. Um, I'm gonna call it the ramen puzzle because that seems to be what it is. It seems to be a bowl of ramen. Um, yeah, just 100 pieces and it's a little round shaped puzzle. But yeah, it's basically looking down on top of like a bowl of ramen where you got your boiled eggs here and some like bok choy, like the sort of uh, Asian green vegetables, mushrooms, noodles, soup, some seaweed. Yeah, so I guess it's some sort of, yeah, I think it's ramen or it's like some sort of noodle soup type thing um, in a white bowl. Um, but yeah, it's really cute. It comes in this little box. Um, actually, surprisingly, comes with a reference poster. <laughs> so, and the box is quite sturdy. I was actually kind of impressed with this one actually because I wasn't expecting very much. I was like, oh, it's just a little novelty kind of gift, which I guess it is, but I actually kind of like the packaging. I like how it's got this sort of little section around it. I like this cute little square. And yeah, I liked that the puzzle's like a round shaped puzzle. Um, and so yeah, as for the pieces, um, they have a white paper backing. Um, they actually fit together pretty well. I think there were a couple false fits like on the white bowl bit especially, but uh, it wasn't too hard to figure out. I mean, it's only a hundred pieces. Um, what else? Um, sometimes they'd hold together. Sometimes they wouldn't. If I think occasionally you could pick up sections, but it was a bit hit and miss. Um, there wasn't really any dust. Yeah, white paper backing. Um, surprisingly, the surface was smooth, but actually kind of matte. So it kind of felt pretty nice. Um, and I was I was able to pick it up once and do a puzzle pick up, and then the next time it kind of crumbled. So again, a bit hit and miss. But yeah, just a cute, fun one. Definitely like a sort of stocking stuffer type thing. I've done it once. Don't know if I'm gonna hang on to this one. Probably not, but it's kind of the sort of thing you could like have on your desk or yeah, like, you know, add in as a, yeah, like I said, a stocking stuffer kind of gift. Um, but yeah, it was fun for what it was. So yeah, kind of cute, enjoyed it. Um, so that is everything that I did for the month of August. So for my least favorite puzzle, I ended up going with this Masterpieces uh, Contours Tropical Menagerie puzzle, mainly just because the image and the quality were my least favorite out of all the puzzles. Uh, yeah, the image, I don't know what I was thinking. It's pretty tacky and cheesy and yeah, um, yeah, don't know what I was thinking. I think it was just, I just thought the shape and the cute whimsies were kind of cool. Um, but yeah, and the uh, quality just really wasn't great. It just wasn't there. It was very, you know, cheap feeling, pieces are very flimsy, glossy, quite a lot of dust. So yeah, just not my favorite. So I don't think I'll be doing any more of these ones, unfortunately, but uh, you know, still glad that I tried it out. And then choosing a favorite was a bit more difficult because there were just some really great images and also a lot of puzzles with very good quality. Um, but I end up going with this Good Vibes Only one from Soonus. Um, you'll probably guess why. Basically, yeah, I just really love the artwork. It's so bright and fun and colorful. And yeah, just uh, really kind of fits in with my vibe and aesthetic. So yeah, I just was really attracted to this and just really had a lot of fun with it and really love the quality and the whole sort of luxe experience just uh really yeah just really like the the whole package i guess and i felt like the really good quality kind of just did the artwork justice so yeah i think yeah the whole thing was just a very positive and yeah fun and enjoyable experience so that's all of the puzzles that i completed for the month of august i think there was a pretty good mix of puzzles in there and i feel like i did a pretty reasonable amount i got a few more done than the month before so yeah pretty happy with that and i got to do some really lovely ones as well um so yeah i guess in the comments below let me know what you thought of the ones i did were there any there that you also did or you know let me know what ones you completed during the month of august if you enjoyed this video then make sure you show that like button some love and for more videos like this and for even more puzzle content then don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications by subscribing not only will you be the first to know when a new video is released but you're also helping this channel grow and you can find me over on instagram at jigsaw underscore where you'll find even more puzzle content thanks so much and see you next time bye